Thank you, Professor Brusa, for your talk. Now it's time for the presentations of the three coordinators. We will start with Professor Matteo Zanzareorda, who will present you the PhD program in Computer and Control Engineering. Professor Zanzareorda, it is your turn. Thank you so much. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you again to the organizers of this event. I'm uh, Matteo Sonzareorda, and uh, I will uh, provide you with uh, some ideas uh, about uh, the PhD programs uh, at Politecnico in general. And then uh, I will focus uh, a bit more on uh, the PhD program I'm in charge of, uh, which is the one in uh, computer and control engineering. Uh, let me first start uh, with uh, a very few information about the PhD. Uh, PhD is a, a very well-known uh, uh, term uh, in some countries. I hope uh, you also have a general idea. Uh, it is the third level in the university curricula uh, after the bachelor and the master. And uh, uh, the specific goal of PhD is to train students to become researchers. Researchers that uh, may found, uh, um, find a, a position in, uh, after the degree in academia or in industry, wherever it is necessary, uh, someone uh, with uh, skills in doing uh, research. Clearly, training students uh, to become researchers, uh, say following PhD students, uh, is uh, something very important for uh, all uh, research uh, universities. So all research universities in uh, uh, worldwide have a high number of uh, PhD students. Uh, and the PhD students uh, are also a resource because uh, they do research, because the uh, training in this case is done uh, by doing. So Polytechnic in particular uh, is uh, investing uh, significant resources in the last years, and it is, uh, is continuing to uh, extend these resources to support and expand its PhD programs. So this is a growing period for PhD programs at Polytechnic. A few words about what doing research is. Doing research means, first of all, identifying problems. Well, we are a technical university, so these problems are not theoretical problems. These are problems mainly coming from companies, from industries. Uh, and uh, are very practical problems uh, in the short, uh, medium, or long term, but uh, they are uh, uh, practical problems. And uh, doing research uh, means uh, comparing these uh, problems uh, with uh, the state of the art uh, in a given area. Perhaps uh, there are solutions already. We need uh, to know uh, all of them. And then uh, uh, if uh, solutions are not available, we need uh, to devise, uh, develop, uh, and obviously assess uh, the effectiveness of the uh, new solutions we are uh, imagine, okay? Uh, this is the, 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 the core of uh, doing research, but uh, apart from that, uh, there is also an issue with uh, uh, the disseminating these uh, uh, ideas. Uh, doing research is uh, always uh, something uh, which is done uh, in a strict co connection with uh, the research community worldwide. So uh, a lot of things, uh, a lot of uh, concepts are written in the literature, but we also need uh, to interact with the other researchers. Uh, and uh, if we have uh, new ideas, uh, what is uh, winning uh, is uh, to um, speak about uh, these ideas uh, to the other researchers, to present them and to convince them uh, that uh, they are really uh, winning uh, uh, ideas, uh, innovative uh, ideas. So an important part of the research activity is the cooperation, the interaction with the rest of the community by attending conferences, by traveling to other research centers, by publishing papers. And finally, there is also a part connected to the management of the research. In particular, research requires money, requires resources, so when a good researcher is someone knowing where these resources can be found, find, found uh, where, uh, how to write the proposals that can uh, attract money, uh, how to manage a research group involving students, involving postdoc students, etc., and thus, thus it is crucial to be able to follow these people. 
Now, Politecnico is a, an excellent location for doing, for performing research because it is a good research university. And this is not my opinion. It is something which is reported by the worldwide or the international ranking uh, which are distributed here. For example, in this uh, transparency, you can see some information uh, which have been uh, recently published uh, by uh, QS, uh, which is uh, a well-reputed uh, uh, ranking uh, uh, institution. And as you can see, we have a good position both at the international level and uh, at the European level. What is uh, important for uh, what is strong uh, at Politecnico is, first of all, the very good uh, network of connections we have uh, with companies and other uh, research institutions and uh, the very good uh, support uh, to startup uh, companies. So we have uh, an excellent uh, incubator. Uh, the same can be said for the PhD programs uh, in ICT at Politecnico. They are very well established and appreciated worldwide. They are strongly supported by the research groups uh, working in our uh, departments. And uh, uh, all uh, our PhD students are very well connected with the companies and with the international um, community. Let's say a few words about the PhD life. Well, uh, this is different than uh, the uh, life of a typical uh, master student, uh, basically because uh, for every PhD student, uh, there is uh, a supervisor, a tutor, uh, who is in charge of following him, uh, I would say, day by day. A PhD student is normally uh, integrated into a research group. It, uh, um, he or she participates in a, a research project under the uh, guidance of the, this uh, tutor, who is uh, often uh, the leader or plays an important role in his uh, research group. Uh, learning is done by following some courses, uh, by studying uh, the literature, but uh, it, it is also done by making research, by developing uh, um, environments that uh, may allow to validate uh, the ideas that uh, the student uh, may have uh, uh, developed in cooperation with the rest of the, um, of the group. So uh, really you enter into a new dimension here uh, during the PhD in which uh, you really do research uh, uh, integrated into these groups uh, which are uh, in many cases uh, um, excellent groups uh, at the worldwide level uh, in uh, their uh, domain. And uh, the goal of the PhD is uh, to learn how to make research. If you remember my previous uh, um, uh, point. Uh, so uh, you need uh, to understand uh, the problems, uh, you need uh, to know the literature, uh, you need uh, to be able uh, to uh, have uh, innovative ideas and uh, to validate them. Sometimes they are good, sometimes uh, they prove to be, let's say, not effective. And then uh, in, in order to complete uh, your activity, you need uh, to convince uh, the other researchers uh, that uh, uh, at least uh, some of your ideas are really innovative ideas uh, by writing. And uh, be careful because uh, uh, this activity of presenting your ideas, convincing other people, writing papers, making presentation is crucial because it is something which is very well evaluated uh, by other research groups, but also by industries. Uh, they appreciate it and they require this capability in uh, the people they want uh, to possibly hire. And the PhD students uh, typically are involved in research projects in cooperation with companies or funded by public bodies, for example, European projects. Uh, a PhD um, program lasts for three years, uh, starting from uh, November the 1st uh, each year. And after every year, there is an evaluation uh, to check uh, whether the PhD program, uh, the curriculum uh, is going on uh, in the right way, or uh, there are some uh, uh, points uh, which need to be adjustments. And there is, a, uh, in every case, uh, an evaluation committee listening to the PhD student, uh, looking at uh, his uh, or her results, uh, and uh, uh, providing uh, guidance, uh, guidelines uh, for uh, going ahead. At the end of the third year, there is a, a final exam uh, where an external committee uh, evaluates uh, the PhD thesis, uh, a document uh, summarizing what has been done and uh, which results have been uh, gathered, and uh, listening to the presentation and providing an independent evaluation about uh, the work uh, uh, done. At the end of this uh, story, uh, the student uh, receives uh, the PhD uh, degree. 
Uh, let's come to the other extreme of the PSD uh, uh, curriculum, the selection. Well, selection uh, is crucial. Uh, each year, uh, the um, uh, Politecnico uh, publishes uh, uh, um, a call for uh, um, uh, applicants, and uh, there is a, 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 and the next deadline is uh, May 14 for this application. Uh, there are uh, basically two um, uh, deadlines uh, for this application: one in February, uh, one in January, and uh, one in uh, May. In, in, uh, in May, uh, the key point uh, for uh, applying for a PhD uh, position in Politecnico is first of all uh, to identify an area of uh, activity and a tutor who is uh, interested in following uh, the student in his uh, PhD uh, program. Then uh, this uh, tutor. Uh, can follow uh, the student uh, in uh, the application, can guide him or her in this application, uh, which is uh, based uh, on uh, the curriculum and uh, on uh, an interview. And then uh, the selection is done, and starting from uh, November the 1st, uh, the student starts uh, his uh, or her activities uh, under the guidance or the advice. Now, I want to be very clear. It is crucial that, first of all, if you are interested, as I hope, uh, you uh, identify a tutor who is interested in following you on uh, a topic that uh, you agree with him. This is the first step. Uh, I will tell you that, uh, for example, in the case of my PhD program, uh, there is a website where you can find all the uh, proposals uh, pro uh, developed by our researchers uh, for possible uh, students interested in uh, um, starting a PhD program uh, uh, with them. Look at them and uh, be, be in touch with uh, um, uh, the tutor. The second point is be careful. This is a public uh, call for applications. So with uh, some strict rules in terms, for example, of uh, uh, having all the uh, required, uh, let's say, documents and all the required degrees. If you uh, took the degree uh, outside Italy, you need uh, the GRE. Uh, you need uh, some English certification. Look at uh, these uh, uh, constraints and these requirements because uh, they are crucial. Now, coming to my PhD program, the one uh, I'm in charge of, uh, the one in computer and control engineering, uh, it covers uh, the area of computer engineering, control engineering, and operational research. Uh, in uh, the last years, uh, we offered uh, uh, between uh, 25 and 30 uh, positions uh, with grants uh, for every year. And uh, these grants uh, partly come from uh, the university, uh, partly from uh, external bodies like the European Commission, uh, the Italian Institute of Technology, the town uh, uh, of Torino, but also from companies, ST Microelectronics, uh, Giugiaro, Comau, Inspect, uh, just to mention uh, a few. We have uh, some grants from uh, um, team uh, this year, okay? This is the behavior, so you can see that the trend is for a growing number of grants, and this is an attractive point. And once again, look at the PhD website of our program, www.phddowin.polito.it. Here you can see the new offers for activities in our PhD program. You can see a list of uh, past PhD students uh, with uh, some information about where they are so that you can see uh, really uh, how useful it can uh, uh, be the uh, your PhD degree for your uh, future uh, career. You can also see uh, some videos uh, developed by um, the winners of the annual award that we established uh, uh, for uh, recognizing uh, the best uh, PhD students. Uh, and in each video, you can uh, uh, have an idea of uh, what uh, uh, these students uh, did uh, during the, their uh, PhD, which results uh, they achieved. Uh, for every uh, questions you may have, uh, you can uh, refer to me uh, or uh, to uh, Scudo uh, for any kind of uh, further uh, information. Thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you, Professor Sozzare Orta. Uh, now it is the turn of Professor Stefano Di who will present us the PhD program in Electrical Electronics and Communications Engineering. Thank you, Professor Di Thank you very much. So here I'm going to discuss uh, the PhD program in Electrical Electronic Communication Engineering, of which I am the coordinator. 
I will start with some numbers. Uh, first of all, you see from this graph that uh, the electrical electronics communication engineering program is by far the largest among all programs in Polito. And actually these are all numbers. These are last year's numbers. Now we have pretty much 160, 170 active students enrolled in this PhD program. The reason why this is so large, it's because it conveys a number of topics, electrical electronics communication, which are very broad, diverse, and I will be commenting on these topics uh, in, in, in short. Still about numbers, you see this is, in, uh, this is a list of cycles. Each cycle is one academic year, and uh, these are in chronological order. This is the last uh, set of students started, uh, who started last year. You see that over the last three years, we had pretty much between 50 and 60 students active. Uh, you also see an interesting figure. You see that uh, almost all students are active, uh, starting from the students that enrolled at the beginning. So very few students are lost in action. Why is that so? This is not to say that the doctor is not selective. The doctor is very selective, in fact, but the selection is performed at the beginning, at the selection uh, moment. When you enroll and you pass the examination for admission, uh, you typically are a well-motivated uh, student and motivation is key to success in the end. So the people that are lost in action here are lost maybe either because they found a job with a five-digit salary they couldn't say no to or they had to go back to their own countries uh, for foreign students or so for very particular reasons. So the, the rule here is that almost all students that are enrolled make it to the end. About the topics, uh, our doctor is very broad, as I said. So topics go from electrical and power systems, including power converters and electrical machines and drives, so anything that has to deal with electrical power, uh, to higher frequency electromagnetics, including antennas, uh, biomedical devices, uh, and all aspects of computational electromagnetics at low and high frequency. Uh, we cover, of course, all aspects of electronics, which is ubiquitous in everyday life. So including uh, digital and analog applications for power and signal uh, from uh, uh, the nanoscale devices uh, based on first principle analysis up to micro uh, and micro scale and higher up to the system level uh, scale. And even from low frequency and DC up to high frequencies, microwaves even optics. We do have a curriculum with the National Institute of Nuclear Physics, which is dedicated to design of radiation detectors that they use in fundamental physics uh, experiments in, at CERN. We do have all aspects of communications, communication networks, uh, navigation system uh, with satellites, uh, signal and image processing. And of course, uh, the hot topic of the moment, which is uh, data science and machine learning, with, with all its possible applications that you may think of. And finally, we do have also uh, some programs in controls, including mechatronics and robotics and system automation. So you see this broad set of topics is the clear justification that uh, the number of students in this program is by far the largest among all Polito programs. Uh, let me talk about, uh, once again, this slide. You have seen this already uh, with reference to the final exam. Now I would like to talk about a little bit about the evaluation process that takes place for admission to the next year and for the admission to the final exam. Uh, in fact, this evaluation, you have to think uh, it's very different from what you're used to in your uh, regular studies at the bachelor or master level. Uh, at the master level or bachelor even, you basically attend a number of exams, you pass these exams, uh, and when the number of exams that you're supposed to attend and pass are finished, then you take uh, your degree. Here is very different. The evaluation is performed 360 degrees on all those aspects that are important uh, for a researcher. So this not only includes course, courses, of course, of course, are included. So there will be some courses with, with exams I'm going to talk about in a second. But also we evaluate students based on other metrics, including publications, uh, amount of uh, time and periods that you spent abroad, uh, amount of conferences you attended, all aspects that count uh, towards a career of a researcher. So speaking of courses, there are two types of courses, hard skill and soft skills. 
hard skills are highly specialized technical courses. Of course, uh, being a researcher means being the top expert, worldwide leading expert on a given topic. So you need to know everything about that topic, and so you need to study. So we have a rich catalog of hard skill courses. Uh, we have our own list of courses for our doctorate. Uh, it's about 50, 60 different courses, of which uh, about 30 are activated each and every year. You can have a glimpse at this link here to see the detailed catalog. This catalog is, however, communicated to the doctorate school, Spudo of Polito, and merged together with the other catalogs from other, uh, the other 16 uh, doctorate courses at Polito. You have to see this catalog as a whole. So in principle, each PhD student is totally free to choose uh, independently, of course, with the agreement of, with, with the tutor, the, the detailed list of courses he wants to attend and pass. Everything that is useful uh, towards the goal of the PhD thesis can be used as courses, even if not coming from our own catalog. So this gives you a lot of degrees of freedom in shaping up your uh, training program. Not only, but the hard skill courses can taken not only from Polito, but from any other university. So we do recognize credits for courses attended abroad or in other Italian universities. You can attend PhD summer schools, which are using very nice locations as well. You can attend tutorials and conferences or seminars at the prestigious institution. All these credits count in your training. About soft skills, uh, not everything is technical. Being a researcher means uh, being able to communicate your research and to exploit the results of your research. Therefore, you will attend courses, these are mandatory for a given number of hours, courses on how to speak in public, courses about ethics in research, but even more important, how to exploit AP. Uh, during your PhD career, even later, you will probably invent something you will uh, find some new results, what to do with the results. Or you can choose the option of publish the results, become famous, publish papers, or you can choose the option to make money out of it. Make money means either filing a patent and sell it to a big company for money, or you can protect your IP through a patent and then start your own company, build a startup company, which of course is a, a, a new endeavor and there are courses that teach you how to do that. So there are courses dedicated to the entrepreneurship as a student and later as researcher. You can find these courses in this uh, catalog here, which uh, is maintained by this Dr. School of Polito. You can find all the details here. Keep in mind that all courses I've been, I've been talking about are the, once again very different from the courses you attend at the master level. These are like long seminars. They last 10, 20 hours at most, uh, 30 hours being an exception. The actual content of the courses is sometimes tailored together with the PhD students attending that particular year the course in order to uh, find an agreement on those topics that are of interest. Right? So maybe you can ask the instructor to cover a particular topic that is of interest for your PhD thesis, and the final project, the final exam of the course, the final pro project that is due to pass the exam can be dedicated to a topic that is of relevance for your individual PhD thesis. So you see very different from the standardized uh, topics that are at the master level. Uh, external research activities count a lot in the evaluation. So all PhD students are strongly encouraged to spend the research period abroad. This can be up to 18 months. And don't be scared, there are plenty of opportunities. Usually, the tutor plans a research stay, or in general, he's involved strongly in this process. All of us professors have very uh, well-articulated collaboration networks internationally. Uh, we know a lot of the colleagues uh, in universities around the world, or companies around the world. And it's very common, if not the rule, to, spend, to, to send our students for some research period abroad. This is very enriching and this is strongly encouraged. And keep in mind the scholarship amount will be augmented by 50% if for any day that you spend abroad as a research period. Finally, I will conclude my presentation with this post today. In addition to the evaluation based on uh, credits from courses and other external activities and publications, we do have an event which is called the post today, uh, which takes place uh, in October every year. 
all PhD students attend the post today, they must. Uh, it's an event where 160, 70 people stand up by their posters, illustrating their research activities to their peers, other PhD students, to faculty members, to reviewers that we call to evaluate the posters. Uh, we offer a free lunch, which is not bad. And then at the end of the day, we collect all the results of the evaluation and use this data for assessing the students and admitting them to the second, third year and to the final exam. I raise this point because uh, the link here that you see <clears throat> is uh, dedicated to the collection of the posters that have been presented uh, over the last few years. So we build a sort of annual report with the collection. <clears throat> This is the best place where you can find the detailed information of the specific topics being uh, investigated by students uh, to get to know who are the tutors that work on these topics. <clears throat> so this gives you a glimpse on the overall picture that I can give you on, on my doctorate. So if you have doubts, uh, look it up over here and please send me an email, communicate with me if you need additional, uh, additional information. Maybe you have an idea and you don't know who is the right tutor that could follow you and advise you during your PhD. Just drop me a note, I will point you to the right person. With this, I'd like to conclude and pass it up to, to the next speaker. Thank you for attending. Thank you, Professor Grive Taloccia, for your presentation. Now it is the turn of Professor Marco Parvis for what concerns the PhD program in Scientology. Professor Parvis, thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Marco Parvis, the coordinator of the PhD program in metrology. And I'm here to tell you something about uh, the PhD in general and something about the PhD in metrology. The, the general part, uh, it's really important for you because the, the question might be, is it worth doing the PhD, doing the PhD at Polytechnic Torino? Uh, yes, it is, of course. Because uh, in the United States, the salary when you earn a PhD degree is something like 30% more than the usual salary. In Italy, PhD students are real students with all the student advantages, but they have also a grain. And uh, the three years count for the retirement contribution. That's really important. Students get a grant at Polytechnic de Torino of more than 1,800,000 euro per year net. The amount is not taxed and does not add up with other amounts. And the Polytechnic send to the company which in Italy deals with uh, your retirement, more than 6,300 euro per year. Uh, of course, what will happen at retirement depends on what happened during your life. But anyway, the three years are not lost anyway. That's important. And your age doesn't matter. We have students, researchers doing the PhD, and that's not a thing really important. Then, then going to specific to metrology, should I do my PhD in metrology? <laughs> of course, the, the, the answer, if you listen to me, is yes, of course, because the PhD in metrology is established in cooperation with the Italian Metrological Institute, uh, named code Ingrim. And uh, would you like to say that metrology is not meteorology? Because when I was young, I, I was a, a, a PhD student in the first cycle. And uh, when I got to the company, they told me, oh, you are doing the PhD in metrology, so you are looking for the weather. No, no, we are not looking for the weather. Metrology is a weird name for a nice word. Everything is a major name. Students find a placement everywhere in the academia, in the metrological institutes, and also in the industry for quality assurance. PhD students are on the research bleeding edge. You can go abroad, in university, in primary, in metrological institutes uh, all over the world, and they have high fidelity because either zero or at most one student drop it in every site. That's, again, it's very important. The PhD in metrology, uh, let you to do several different kinds of researches at Polita, at Ingrid, at CERN. Uh, uh, you, you can have uh, the list of the research topics uh, 
uh, in the link you see there. And uh, in applied metrology uh, at Politecnico di Torino, in high energy particle metrology at CERN, and a lot of different kind of uh, different operation in uh, normal PGD uh, at Ingrim. Uh, what could we say? I, I, I don't want to steal you more time than this short in, in interview I'm going to you. Uh, we, we would like to move to testimonials because testimonials are the most important part in the PhD, of course. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, let's go to the testimonial now.